Now you talk about coming out. At what point in your life did you realize that uh, you had that sexual orientation? Yeah, it's just something that, you know, um, you just have these feelings for so long as a kid, but you suppress them, you know? I remember, you know, my mom always saying, I'm the only child. My mom would always say, oh, I can't wait to have grandchildren. She has such a high-pitched voice, my mom. I can't wait to have grandchildren. So back in the 80s, no one wants to let their mom down, you know, when she's always saying that stuff. So you just suppress those feelings for so long. And then, you know, I got signed to WWE. I was on top of the world in my life, you know, doing Nexus and all that other stuff. But I just wasn't comfortable with myself. And then I had moved to from Tampa, Florida, where I got where I was living I was able to move and I had found love in Miami and I moved to Miami. I lived there for almost four to five years and that's when I had found true love. So I ultimately sacrificed my career to help inspire others to be and accept themselves. That's why I always say that my fight is much more bigger than in the ring. It's outside of the ring fighting bigotry and hatred and just trying to be a voice of the voiceless, not only when it comes to the LGBTQ community, but anyone that gets bullied into silence, you know what I mean? So I always say none of us are strong as all of us. That's why my whole block the hate movement is so near and dear to me and so important to me. But um, I'm glad, I'm glad I had came out because it was guys like Randy Orton and CM Punk and Big Show and Mark Henry and Sheamus and Titus that just made it a lot more easier to walk into a locker room. And of course, you probably have your favorites and not so favorites, but it was those guys that made it a lot easier for me to walk into a locker room. Randy Orton, you know, I still get giddy when he likes some of my stuff on social media. So I can only imagine how people feel when I like their stuff on social media. Uh, um, Randy's wife loves me. Randy loves me. Big Show. I remember Big Show and I lived in Miami. Uh, and uh, he would always, once I came out publicly, he was like, him and I were like this. And I always say at least three or four times, four or five times, I, I forget the number. He hooked me up with first class living in Miami. I don't know how he did it, but uh, he always he always took care of me and he always looked after me. And even when the big show backstage was pissed off. In the trainer's room, pissed off, he would see me and just smile and just say, how you doing, Darren? So it's relationships and experiences like that that I'll never forget and I'll always cherish. Now, I remember when it first came out um, that you were gay. It was on TMZ and you were just walking in an airport. Is that when you just decided, hey, TMZ is coming up to me, I'm going to say it or... Did it come out before, but it just wasn't that public and you just took that opportunity to make it that much more public? You know, uh, I could have been outed. Who knows? Um, like I said, uh, you know, it, I felt like it was like the right place and the right time. And it was like fear of the unknown. I, I The TMZ said what he said and I came out with what I said. And I said to myself afterwards, I said, Damn, uh, hmm, I, I, I don't know if I should have said that, you know? So that's when I had contacted WWE and I told them what had happened and they assured me everything would be okay. But thank goodness I did what I did because I was just tired, just tired of living a lie. Uh, you know, there are many reasons why I came out, but some of the main reasons I came out was because I wanted to be able to bring my boyfriend backstage into the masculine world of professional wrestling. I wanted to be able to bring him to red carpet events and hold his hand and be proud, you know, and I was able to do that. And he made some great, uh, he made some great connections. Uh, he wasn't a big wrestling fan, um, Nikki. But he was a big fan of like uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Attitude Era because even people that didn't like wrestling uh, kind of knew who Stone Cold Steve Austin was. So Steve Austin uh, and my ex at the time, we ran into Steve before he was going to do his uh, show backstage at Raw. And uh, he was just so kind to uh, my ex and me. And he was saying, oh, How's this guy treating you? How are you enjoying WrestleMania week? You know, so 
just so kind and just stuff that I'll never forget. Steve Austin being so kind to my ex that loved him at the time. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.